Hey all, it's Matt, your average gamer, and for this one, we're going to be covering an early game Bloodhound's Fang build and guide. This is going to be pretty much an on-cut guide that you can follow from the beginning. An hour in, you're going to be incredibly overpowered with one of the best weapons in the game. We'll also be getting to over level 40 in an hour. Everything you need for this build, we're going to grab some buffs, a talisman, a tier, a couple different things you can use to make this build a little bit better. And overall, this is one of the most broken early game weapons you can possibly use. And sit back and follow this guide step by step and you're going to be incredibly powerful in Elden Ring rather quickly. This is going to be one of those things where it's going to actually shock you how much damage it does, especially if you're unfamiliar with Elden Ring. First things first, we're going to pick the Samurai class to start because we need some dexterity. You're also going to pick the Golden Seed as your keepsake and then you can customize your characters however you want. And we're going to jump right in, get going with this, and again within an hour's time you're going to be incredibly powerful. And there's not going to be much to explain throughout the entire course of the video when we're on horseback. A couple different parts that are going to be longer, so I'm not going to voice over the entire thing, but I am going to guide you through each individual step and any parts that may be confusing. Follow this along and you really can't go wrong. One thing to say at the beginning of this video for those that sub to my channel that have been following me lately, I really appreciate everybody's support. I know we're waiting for DLC. Two months to go, it's not that long. Well, two months and change. And honestly, I just wanted to do a shout out and say that I appreciate all of you and thank you so much for your support. Yeah, this truly has been an awesome community and the Discord is linked below if you want to join that. If you have any questions about this guide or you have any questions in general, you could always ask there, including myself, and somebody will get back to you and help you the best they can. Alright, let the Grafted Scion defeat you at this point. You can try to fight it if you're competent enough in beating it, but there's really not a lot you're going to get for it right now that you need for this build. So let him defeat you, and then we're going to start the game and move on with the Bloodhound's Fang build. Alright, now without further ado, let's start this. Let's get into this. Follow me directly, step by step. As long as you follow exactly what I do, the game, especially the early game, is going to be incredibly easy, and you can start to work your way into an incredibly powerful Bloodhound's Fang build. Let's go. One thing you want to grab here early is the crafting kit. That'll help you later in the game. That's something you definitely want to have. And when you get runes later on, you can come back. You can also grab those pots that he sells. There's three of them, the cracked pots. That will help you too.
Have you hey, sir, but you I can play turning wood to aid you. You need own to the foot. Venice, summon me. Ah, I bequeath. He it will summon torrent. Treat him with And once you're at Gatefront, make sure to equip the Spectral Steed now that you have it so you can hop on your horse, grab the first map, and head to the ravine. At the ravine, you will get invaded. I ended up taking on the NPC invader solo, but if you wait, Hunter Euro will come to help you, and it will be two-on-one in your favor. Fight Patches in the cave, get him to surrender, and then once you reload the area, he's going to open up it as a merchant, and we're going to be looking to buy a couple gold pickle foul foot, and to remember that he also sells market shackle. Now buy two gold pickle foul foot and remember that he sells market shackle because we're going to come back for that item later. That will stun the first boss and helps with the first boss fight in Elden Ring and spoiler alert it can help you later on too.
Now, while this won't increase the special attack after we grab Bloodhound's Fang, you could do massive damage with the charge attack, so we are going to grab the charge tier and axe talisman. Follow me on screen to grab both these and then head to the church afterwards. Once you're at the church, make sure you grab the sacred tier, the wondrous physic, everything you need here. Grab the site of grace, and then behind the church, there's going to be spirit springs we're going to be using to head towards Caleb. And now we're going to head in the direction of Caled. Continue to follow me. We're going to be going towards Rotview Balcony, where we're going to do a couple of things in Caled, including grabbing our first buff and farming the dragon in Dragon Barrel. Forget it a turn if you had it seems torrent, whereas I'm there is but I can take gathering very well at my hand. Might as well rest at the site of grace because she's going to bring you back to the round table hold the first site of grace you rest at and kill it. So go back to the round table hold and then go back to Rotview Balcony.
Now we're gonna go grab Flame Grammy Strength. It's at the fort right next to Rotview Balcony. That's gonna allow us to get a buff that increases our physical damage by 20% and our fire damage by 20%. It's a good buff to have here for Bloodhound's Fang. And now we're going to head to Dragon Barrow because there's a big dragon in Dragon Barrow that we could farm for some runes and we're going to get levels and we're probably going to be around level 35 or so. By the end of this video we'll be hitting level 41 I believe. This is important because you need a good window when the dying animation starts in order to cheese this dragon. And Caleb, make sure you grab this Sight of Grace before you farm the dragon. Make sure you grab it, rest at it, do whatever you gotta do, and then farm the dragon. Don't attempt this yet until I explain it, especially if you don't know what you're doing here because I want to explain this first. Now, the dragon you can proc bleed on. It takes about five minutes to take down. Right before the last proc or when there's a little bit of damage left, you're gonna use a gold pickle foul foot. Then you will have your horse slotted in and ready. You're going to have that spectral steed ready to go. For me on um, Xbox, all I have to do is hit X. And then once the dragon's defeated and the dying animation starts, you're going to book it back to the site of grace behind you and rest as quickly as possible. And this has to be done relatively fast, so you can even practice this beforehand to make sure you're able to run back and rest at the site of grace ahead of time. Also, you can do the last hit on horseback if that helps you. 
get on your horse, book it back to the side of grace, and rest. This will keep the dragon alive, but net you the runes anyway. You'll get around 60, 70,000 runes or so, somewhere around there, and the dragon will still be alive, meaning that you can farm the dragon continuously. We're going to do this twice for two sets of levels. Since we'll be grabbing Bloodhound's Fang a little bit later, our main focus will be a quality build, dexterity and strength, but it leans more towards dexterity. You need, I think, a minimum of 12 or 13 strength somewhere around there in order to wield it, and then I think you need like 20 dex or so around there. So we're going to go for dexterity, strength, and faith for our buffs. 15 faith will allow us to use Flame Grant Me Strength. You could also go for a little mind, endurance, and vigor, of course. And then we're going to farm the dragon a second time. We ended up doing this two times in total. You can follow me on screen as to what I do with the levels and continue to level up. Well, I think we're going to hit around 36 or so. Before the end of the video, we're going to be at 41. Make sure you have enough runes. If you don't, you can farm the dragon some more. You can continue to level up with that dragon, by the way, at your own will. Just level up dexterity, vigor, endurance, and mind. You're going to grab Market Shackle too. It will help with the first boss. From the Stormhill Shack side of Grace, which is just north of Gatefront, you're going to go all the way up to Liernia of the Lakes. You're going to follow me around Stormville. We're going to be heading in the direction of Bloodflame Blade and, of course, allowing us to later upgrade our weapons to plus four as well.
And once you're at the beautiful location that is Leurne of the Lakes, you're going to grab the Sacred Tear from the church there, and you're going to continue on down towards the lakes, and we're going to continue moving towards Bloodflight Blade. Do not forget to grab the maps as, like Limgrave, I'm going to show you where all three maps are for the Ernie of the Lakes, which will help you later on.
And this is where Blood Flame Blade is in the lakes. It will add 40 bleed to your weapon, an innate 40 bleed. It has a little bit of a build-up effect. It's awesome for Bloodhound's Fang because you can put it on the weapon and get a total of around 95 bleed. Grab the last map for the lakes, and then we're going to head on to meet EG, who's going to sell us Somber Smithing Stones 1, 2, and 3. You don't have to buy the fourth one, as there is a fourth one really close by. It's relatively close, and we're just going to pick that one up rather than spend 6,000. If you don't have enough runes, just continue to farm the dragon. You could also get the enemies to fight at Fort Goal or even Red Main Castle and Caleb for some runes. Either one of those are also awesome early game farm options. Well, I presume. Oh, I am an old crow here, perhaps. So if you want to skip buying the last one, there's one right nearby. It's very close by. I wasn't sure if there was a spirit spring to jump down there or not, so I went back to Sorcerer's Isle. You're going to follow me. We're going to continue north. It's going to open up this ravine site of grace, and right next to it is the Somber Smithing Stone 4. Also, north of that ravine, by the way, is a way to get to the Altless Plateau. We're not going to go that far yet, but there is a boss at the top of it, the Magma Worm. He's not too tough. There's a summon that can actually help you with Actually, you get two summons for that boss fight, but that is another way to get to Altless Plateau, which is the next section.
You're going to buy a dagger to put Golden Vow on, which is an Ash of War we're going to be grabbing soon. And then you're going to grab the Finger Seal as well, because that will allow us to use the buff, Flame Grammy Strength. Alright, now let's go get Bloodhound's Fang, one of the most broken weapons in the game, and honestly, as I can actually say now, because I've never really used it this early game before, it's absolutely absurd the amount of damage it does. Now, interestingly enough, I did get Bloodhound's Fang on my first run back when the game launched, but I didn't know about Bloodflame Blade or how to build around it, and I didn't even really know about the follow-up attack on the Ash of War. It's amazing that I couldn't figure that out, but anyways, I ended up using it for a very short period of time and moved on to Guts Greatsword. Looking back now, and now Guts with Lion's Claw is reliable throughout the entire game, no question, but looking back now, especially how much easier it is to get somber smithing stones early, I think Bloodhound's Fang is probably the best early game build in the game. So the boss at this Ever Jail we're going to is the boss you're going to have to defeat, and he can be a little bit difficult. He does not have a lot of HP, but he can dish out a lot of damage. I ended up beating him on the third try. Overall, it wasn't too tough with a base katana. I believe you can do it. Defeating him will net you Bloodhound's Fang, one of the best weapons in the game, a weapon that's going to be reliable late game, mid game, early game, just a weapon that's reliable across the board, really, and the best, in my opinion, quality weapon in the game, no question. So I knew I didn't have enough runes to get to plus 4 when I went back to the round table hold, so a minor blip here, but I wanted to farm the dragon one more time anyway, so we're going to farm the dragon one more time, we're going to get some more levels, and we're going to have enough runes to get our weapon to plus 4, and then grab Golden Vow Ash of War, and move on.
this is what I ended up doing with the levels. Make sure you upgrade your flash along the way too. And overall, you want to have around 5,000 or so runes left over at least, maybe five, 6,000, enough to get Bloodhound's Fang to plus four because we're going to want to get as much damage as we can out of this awesome weapon. And now we're level 41 and we have a plus 4 Bloodhound's Fang. Now there is a 5 Smithing Stone, Somber Smithing Stone. There's a couple in Kaled if you want to look those up. I didn't bother to grab them because honestly, plus 4 is plenty for the early game. It does massive damage. All right, we're going to grab the Golden Vow Ash of War now. Follow me directly on screen. This will give you 10% more attack and defense. It's an aura buff. You can stack that with Flame Grant Me Strength, which is a body buff, and it lasts around 45 seconds. Honestly, this knight has given me a little bit of trouble on pretty much all of my early game builds. Not a lot, just a little bit, but my god, he was literally two hits. Bloodhound's Fang is ridiculous early game. This is a weapon you should get late game. It doesn't really make sense that it's in Limgrave, but hey, I'm not complaining. It's awesome. Now you want to put the Golden Vow Ash of War on a dagger so you can use that first and then switch back to Bloodhound's Fang. I'll go over the buffing order in a little bit. All right, our build is mostly complete here. We're going to be heading on to Margit. We're going to go up from Stormhill Shack, go north, head to face Margit, the first boss of the game, and we're going to see how much damage we could do. Now, for the buffing order here, here's how we're going to do this. We're going to drink our tier first, which has the charge tier in it and the axe talisman in case we throw in some charged attacks. We're going to use the golden vow ash of war, fill up our FP. And then, of course, we're going to use blood flame blade, which has a duration of around a minute. And then flame grant me shank last because it's only 30 seconds. We're going to go into the fight and make sure you have market shackle equipped. All right, let's see how well we can handle Margit, the first boss of the game, who can give a lot of people uh, trouble. Let's see how much damage we can do here. Wow, 757, the follow-up attack. So between the two, 1,500 damage, and we got a third one in for a total of 2,300. That's kind of absurd. 
This weapon is like an early game cheat code in all seriousness. And there's our charge attack power, by the way, with the Axe Talisman and the charge tier. That's absolutely absurd, too. With 800 damage, you could do charge attacks and get a lot of damage as well. This was ridiculous. This turned out well. I hope you guys liked it. Yeah, well, sorry, Morgan. I'm going to show Godric, too, if you need a boss strategy for him. But I'm thinking there's not going to be a lot of boss strategies with this weapon. I mean, yeah, I end up getting hit a couple times from Godric. I do. I make a few mistakes. But overall, this is the build, by the way. It's an incredible build. We have Bloodhound's Fang, Golden Vow, Ash of War. We have the Finger Seal. We started with the Samurai class. We have the Axe Talisman, Charge Tier, Green Spill, Crystal Tier. And, of course, we're using Market Shackle, too. You can check out our stats here. And of course, we're using Flame Grimming Strength and Blood Flame Blade. We have 20 Vigor, 13 Mind, 15 Endurance, 18 Strength, 20 Dexterity, 15 Faith, 9 Intelligence, and 10 Arcane for this awesome Bloodhound's Fang early game build. All right, let's take on Godric, see how this goes. And that was just in an hour's time. Not too bad. Same buffing order that you'll see on screen, or actually I didn't show it this time. Same as last time, though. The same exact order. You're going to use Golden Vow, Ash of War, Blood Flame Blade, and Flame Grimming Strength last because it's the shortest duration. Let's take on Godric and see how this goes. Yeah, in phase two, I actually ended up getting hit more than I would have liked because I was getting greedy, but overall, the damage is absolutely insane. By the way, make sure you dodge that attack. Uh, it can be highly damaging as far as physical damage output anyway, and yeah, we're able to do massive damage to him. The only thing that shocked me is I didn't get a posture break. Yeah, that ultimately ended up messing up phase two for me because I assumed immediately upon hit he would end up getting a poise break because usually the Ash of War for Bloodhound's Fang does really good posture damage. He ends up going down anyway, but yeah, I got a little confused here. I was wondering why he wasn't broke at that point. And then he did a series of attacks, which I was just kind of bad at dodging at, and then of course went for his one very few ranged attacks with the uh, right arm there. I think that's like the only one he has with the right arm with the axe. And uh, yeah, that was ridiculous. But even so, we've got a ton of damage. Awesome build. Bloodhound's Fang is absurd early game. Yeah, I meant in Phase 2 because I don't see him do the swings in Phase 2 that much. So, yeah, it's just that kind of one attack where he lunged towards me, which I also don't see that often and ended up hitting me. But overall, Bloodhound's Fang damage is incredible. This is a build you cannot go wrong with. Hopefully this guide was helpful. Hopefully this got you everything. We went over everything. We got two buffs. We ended up with the Axe Talisman and Charged here to mix in some charge attacks. It doesn't boost the follow-up, unfortunately. We're going to level up a little bit more here if you want to follow me. But generally speaking, you can continue to level Dexterity. And then, of course, we got Bloodhound's Fang. We got it to plus four, and we ended up being able to build around it and turn it into something really good. We got a seal for our buffs, a dagger for Golden Val. Thanks for watching this one. I appreciate everybody who hung by. I know this was a longer video, but it was on cut. Sub for more Elden Ring content. Most of my videos, I talk over the entire thing, so you will get to know me. But for the early game guides, I don't really do that as much because there's so much time on horsepack and they tend to be on the longer side. If you want more early game guides or there's something you want to see on my channel, comment below. If you have any opinions on Bloodhound's Fang or anything for the future of the channel, comment. I appreciate the feedback. I love this community and thank you.